This video is going to be about quadrilaterals and what we're going to do is make a quadrilateral family tree. So um, my plan is to take up this entire page um, just showing the different quadrilaterals and then the characteristics that they have. So um, labeling at the top, I am just going to start with um, kind of just a random quadrilateral. So, all right, quadrilateral by definition is just a four-sided figure. So this right here is a basic quadrilateral, and that is a four-sided polygon. And polygon is a figure that is closed, so there's no way to get inside of it. Um, and the um, sides are segments, they're not um, curves. So this is a four-sided polygon, which means closed figure. All right, so anything that has four sides is called a quadrilateral. But then we have specific quadrilaterals. So we are going to go with the ones that are most common first, and then we'll um, come back um, up to the top and then talk about some others that are not as well known. All right, so the most common ones, so I'm going to go down this way. First up is a parallelogram. So I am going to draw this like this. We'll see how that I can make it, and actually I do have my straight edge um, over here that I could use. Okay, so a parallelogram is a quadrilateral. So um, any time what's gonna happen on our um, family tree is that as we go down, the shapes are gonna gain more names. So this is a parallelogram and it is a quadrilateral. So this one is parallelogram. All right, now, it is called a parallelogram because the opposite sides are parallel. So this side is parallel to that side, and this side over here is parallel to that side. So the opposite sides are parallel. And I'm just going to use this symbol for a parallel there. Okay, other characteristics about um, a parallelogram. The opposite sides are also congruent. So this side is the same length as that side, and this one is the same length as that one. So opposite sides are congruent. So opposite sides are congruent. So in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent and parallel. Okay. Um, something else in a parallelogram, the opposite angles are congruent. So I'm talking about this angle right here is congruent to that angle right there. And this angle right here is congruent to its opposite angle right there. So opposite angles are congruent. So opposite angles are congruent. Okay, now getting into things that you might not know about a parallelogram, um, I am going to tell you that the diagonal of any shape is when two vertices are connected that aren't already connected. Okay, so this vertex right here is already connected to that one, and it's already connected to that one. Those are sides. It's not connected to that one. So when we connect those two vertices, we create a diagonal. So I'm just going to use my bookmark to connect because I don't think I'll be able to draw that across. So there is a diagonal right there. And this is another diagonal 
right there. And what happens is that these diagonals bisect each other, so they meet at their midpoints. So this piece is the same length as that one, and this side is the same length as that one. However, they are not congruent. So if you think about it, the reason why this is slanted is because this side piece is a little bit longer than that diagonal. So this diagonal is longer, which is why it leans this direction. So the diagonals bisect each other. So we will write that down. So diagonals bisect each other. So that means that when they meet, they're meeting at their midpoints. However, the diagonals are not congruent. So I might do that in a different color. So the diagonals themselves, the two diagonals are not congruent to each other. All right, now what happens that I think is very cool is that we end up with um, congruent triangles. So this triangle right here is congruent to this triangle right there. And you can see um, we have side, side, side going on there. And then we also know that these two angles would be congruent because they're vertical. So that could help us another way. Um, but in addition, we have this set of triangles are also congruent. So this triangle is congruent to that triangle. So, and again, we have side, side, side going on in there. Those would be vertical angles if you wanted to do side, angle, side. So just some options you have there. All right, so that's your parallelogram. All right, now, after a parallelogram... The next most common um, shape, so I'm going to go down this direction, so going down the family tree over here is a rectangle. So let's see if I can do this. Oh, that one's a little shaky there, but all right. So ah, not so good. That's all right. So here is the rectangle. Now, the deal is, is that since the rectangle is a descendant of the parallelogram, it has all of these characteristics except um, one, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. All right, so let's go through and label everything. So... The opposite sides are parallel. That is still true on our rectangle. And these sides are parallel right there. Um, the opposite sides of the rectangle are congruent. So this side is congruent to that one. This side is congruent to that one. Here's something that is the same but an additional characteristic. The opposite angles are congruent, and that's true. But not only that, in a rectangle, we have four right angles. So um, I think I'll just say four right angles. All right, so the opposite angles are still congruent to each other, but we do have four right angles when we have a rectangle, and we can go ahead and draw them all in, but that would have to happen anyways. All right, um, the diagonals do bisect each other. So when the diagonals meet, they cut each other in half. So I'm gonna use this again as a guide here. So that piece and this piece are meeting in their middles. All right, so that's still true. Diagonals bisect each other. But here's what's different, and that is that the diagonals are the same length. So I'm going to say diagonals are congruent on a rectangle. So diagonals are congruent.
congruent. Okay, so what that means is that this side is congruent to that side because the diagonals bisect each other, and this one is congruent to this one, but they're also all four the same length, which was not true in the parallelogram, but in a rectangle it is. So if you think about it, this is going to stand straight up because those diagonal pieces are the same length. As soon as one diagonal is longer than the other, that's why it bends to the side. All right, now, just like in the parallelogram, we now have congruent triangles. So we have congruent triangles right here. This one is congruent to that one. And then we also have this congruent up here. Oops, I mean this triangle is congruent to this triangle down there. And again, you could do side, side, side. You have side, angle, side. Um, so you have options on that one as well. All right, so going the other side, other direction of a parallelogram, so related to a parallelogram, but not related to a tri oh, sorry, rectangle, hello, not a triangle, not related to a rectangle is the shape that we call the rhombus. All right, so I'm going to go down here. All right, so the rhombus is also a descendant of a parallelogram. So let's see if I can do this one. Uh, well, that's all right. It's okay. It's not amazing, but all right. So this is a rhombus. So once again, since a rhombus is a descendant of the parallelogram, all of these characteristics are going to be true, but um, then there's going to be a few differences, but we'll get to that in a second. So first up, opposite sides are parallel. So that side is parallel to that one. That side is parallel to that one. Opposite sides are congruent, and actually in a rhombus, what happens is all four sides are congruent. So that's what makes a rhombus different from a parallelogram. So we have four congruent sides on a rhombus. Um, opposite angles are congruent. So this angle up here is the same measurement as that one. And then this one, which is an obtuse angle, is the same as that obtuse angle. So opposite angles are still congruent. The diagonals are going to bisect each other, but I'm going to show you what's different about this. Oops, I did not do a good job on that one. All right, so the diagonals, yeah, my shape is not very good. We'll just have to pretend that it is. Okay, so the diagonals bisect each other, which means that this piece is the same as that one, and this length right here is the same as that one. Now, what's different about a rhombus, so the diagonals bisect each other, they're not congruent in length because, again, the shape is tilted to the side, so this diagonal is longer than that one, but what's special about this is that the diagonals are perpendicular. So what that means is that right here is a right angle. Well, if that one's a right angle, so are all the other ones. So I don't know if it will just look like there's a box in there if we do that, but so what we say is that the diagonals are perpendicular. And perpendicular means that it makes right angles. So what happens in this shape is that we end up with four congruent right triangles. I probably should have done them all in different directions there. But these four triangles on the inside of a rhombus are all four congruent right triangles. So if you look at the hypotenuse, it's the same for each one. They're all right triangles, and the legs of those two and those two are the same, and the legs of those and those are the same. So the rhombus is a descendant of the parallelogram. What's different is the four sides are congruent and the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. 
All right, now, um, just play along. So, if the rectangle and the rhombus were to come together, they would create the most well-known quadrilateral, which is our square. So, the square is basically um, has all of the characteristics of all three of these shapes, okay? So, um, we'll start off here. Sides are parallel, so those sides are parallel, and these sides are parallel. All right, opposite sides are congruent. Not only are opposite sides congruent, they're all four congruent. So, the four sides are congruent. That characteristic comes from the rhombus. The opposite sides are, um, oh sorry, the opposite angles are congruent, but not only are they congruent, they're also right angles, which is the characteristic from the rectangle. So a square has four right angles. Um, the diagonals bisect each other, but not only are they bisecting each other, they're perpendicular, oops, sorry, they're perpendicular and congruent. So the diagonals, when we draw the diagonals, they cut each other in half, but not only do they cut each other in half, okay, this doesn't look good, but we'll pretend, um, they bisect each other, but since the diagonals are congruent length, when they bisect each other, we end up with four congruent pieces, and then the diagonals are also perpendicular, which is the characteristic that we get from the rhombus. So, in addition to that, last thing is that we end up with, again, four congruent right triangles. So, and then not only that is these are also isosceles right triangles because the legs are the same length. So we end up with four congruent isosceles right triangles inside of a square. So what we say about a square is um, this is like the perfect shape. This is the perfect quadrilateral and the official name for perfect is regular. So a regular um, polygon is the one that all the angles are equal, all the sides are equal. Um, it's the perfect shape. Okay, so those are the well-known um, quadrilaterals. So now we're going to go to um, two other quadrilaterals that are special quadrilaterals that you know of but maybe don't know the characteristics of. All right, the first one we're going to do is go over here. And this one has a little bit of a family tree, but we're going to only concentrate on one type, and that is a trapezoid. But we're going to concentrate on an isosceles trapezoid. So I think that's not too bad. Okay, so an isosceles trapezoid. So there is a trapezoid and then a little family tree of trapezoids. We're only going to work with the isosceles one. So, isosceles trapezoid. All right, now, um, since the isosceles trapezoid is not a descendant of a parallelogram, it's not going to have the same characteristics. It does, however, have the characteristics of a quadrilateral, which means it has four sides. But what's different about the trapezoid is that there's one pair of parallel sides. So there's only one pair of parallel sides. So in an isosceles triangle, we call those the bases. The side that are parallel to each other are the bases. Um, so there's only one side or one pair of sides that are parallel to each other. All right. Um, looking at the fact that it's isosceles, um, these opposite sides are congruent. So the sides that are not the bases are congruent, and that's because it's isosceles. So there's one pair of congruent sides. So one pair of 
congruent sides. All right. Then, um, if we take a look at the diagonals, the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are going to be the same length. So, when we draw the um, trapezoid, the diagonals, I mean, I'm sorry, the diagonals are the same length. What doesn't happen, though, is that they're not bisected, but the diagonals are congruent, so we can say that, so diagonals are congruent, um, but they are not bisected, so we'll say diagonals do not bisect. Well, I'm going to end it there. Diagonals do not bisect each other. Um, I skipped over the angles. So um, on an isosceles trapezoid, the opposite angles aren't congruent. It's the consecutive angles. So like those two angles down there are congruent to each other, and then those two angles up there. So I'm going to say consecutive, ooh, consecutive angles are congruent. All right, just got that to fit in. Okay, now in an isosceles trapezoid, we have a few congruent triangles. These two are congruent right here. Um, we also have congruent triangles there and there and there and there. There's a triangle up here and down there. Those are obviously um, not congruent, but um, but anyhow, so I don't think I'm going to shade anything in just for confusion, but there are some sets of congruent um, triangles inside the isosceles trapezoid. All right, the last shape is going to go in this direction. So this shape is a quadrilateral. Most people don't believe it when they hear it that it's an actual shape, but we are going to go with, maybe I won't tell you and I'll draw it. Okay, let's see. I'm going to try and draw this accurately. Um, all right, here is your fourth shape, and this is called a kite. So that is the, I don't know why I said fourth, but anyways, um, this is the one, two, three, four, five, six quadrilateral um, in our quadrilateral family tree. All right, so this one is quite different from all of the others. It's still a quadrilateral, but there are no parallel sides. So nothing is parallel. Um, opposite sides aren't congruent, but consecutive sides are. So this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to that side. So I'm going to say consecutive. So consecutive sides are congruent. All right. Now, um, the angles. There's only one pair of congruent angles, and those are these two. So those two angles are congruent. This angle up here is not the same size as that angle down there. So we have one pair one pair of congruent angles. All right, now for the diagonals, when we draw the diagonals, I think it's pretty obvious that the diagonals are not gonna be congruent. So this diagonal is definitely not congruent to this one, but, um, the diagonals are definitely not congruent, but you hopefully will notice this one is bisected. This one is not. The other thing that happens is that they are perpendicular to each other. All right, so um, I'm going to say um, one diagonal is bisected. 
but not both, just the one, just this side is cut in half. So this one is not. So the diagonals of this are more like a lowercase t, if you kind of raised it up or cross. Um, and then the other thing that I want to say is that the diagonals are perpendicular. So diagonals are perpendicular. So right here, we get a right angle. All right, now for congruent triangles, we have a few. Um, so we have these two right angles up here that are congruent to each other. Um, we have these two right triangles down here that are congruent to each other. Um, but then we also have, um, let's see, maybe I'll do it, gosh, I guess I'll do it this way. So if we split the triangle in half this way, then this, the left side of the triangle is congruent to the right side triangle. I think I just said of the triangle, but of the kite. So we have congruent triangles right there at the top. We have congruent triangles down there, and both of those are right triangles, sets of right triangles, but then we have congruent triangles right there and there. So those two triangles are congruent as well. All right, that takes care of the quadrilateral family tree.